For years now, the phrase beginner reptile has been heavily debated, perhaps rivaled in myth by only that of Bigfoot, the Loch Ness Monster, and Chick-fil-A being open on Sunday. Well, I'm here to tell you guys that I've figured it out. It is not a myth, and I have the best beginner reptile that you can get. Let's go, guys. Hey, guys, how's it going? You know, it's the beginning of a new year. Oh, we completely bald. Yellow Aki. Reptile. Hey guys, how's it going? Yes, I figured it out. I know what the best beginner reptile is. Now, obviously you have to have a passion for the species for it to work out, so do keep that in mind. It is important that the species intrigues you and it's something you wanna keep. Passion is first and foremost in reptile keeping, but let's get into it and let's talk about why this reptile that I'm gonna be mentioning is so optimal to start with. Most reptile keepers are in agreement that reptiles, they're not the best beginner pet, but there's a lot of difference in opinion over what is a good intro starting reptile to get into the hobby. Now this probably involves a few different criteria. First of all, it sort of introduces you to the world of reptiles, UVB, heat bulbs, you know, they need to bask, Stuff like that that's not typical of other pets. And also, they have to be pretty sturdy, pretty survivable, if that makes sense. Essentially, if you make a couple mistakes, they're not gonna keel over right away. They're not too finicky, and they can withstand some hardships if necessary. So this particular reptile, which I will mention right now, hold on, before we get to the reptile reveal, definitely consider subscribing in that lower right hand corner and ringing that bell. I do plenty of videos on this species we're about to talk about. So if you wanna hear more about it, definitely subscribe. All right, here's the reveal. Russian tortoises are that ideal reptile. Think about it, and think about it in terms of other beginner, typical beginner, species like bearded dragons or crested geckos or leopard geckos. Crested geckos, you can kind of get away without using UVB. Now, I suggest using it. I don't right now, but I will be doing it in my next enclosure setup. But besides all that, you don't necessarily need to have UVB for them. Whereas Russian tortoises, you do need UVB. So it definitely is a requirement there. So it introduces new keepers to the concept of UVB. It also introduces them to basking bulbs, which in the case of crested geckos, you don't really need basking bulbs too much. I keep mine at room temperature, which a lot of people do. In the case of bearded dragons, Dragons, they're care pretty similar to that of a Russian tortoises. Obviously different ranges and such like that, but they require UVB, they require a basking bowl, and their diet mostly greens like a Russian tortoise. But bearded dragons, they are a little bit more finicky and I think not as well understood by newcomers. They aren't as receptive to mistakes as a Russian tortoise might be. Additionally, and I mean you should know how important water is to living things, but it's not as important to a Russian tortoise as it is a bearded dragon. Bearded dragons can be a little weird about water, <laughs> interestingly. They like moving water, they necessarily can't pick out still water, so I always do dripping. I do have a water bowl in there too for her to run through and I put it in a place that she can run through it. But a Russian tortoise, they're used to going sort of days without water and they will find water if you have it there, so it's not as particular as it is in the case of a bearded dragon. Also bearded dragons, they can sometimes be particular about their greens and they do require inverts. So if you're looking to avoid dealing with bugs right away, you're not ready for that world yet, go with the Russian tortoise. And Russian tortoises, they will definitely eat. They are a lot more willing to eat and they are very enthusiastic about it. And they're pretty fun to watch eat. So there's somewhat of a difference there in pickiness, I guess, between the two species. Leopard geckos, this is probably the one species I hear the most as a good beginner reptile. And I somewhat agree, but I still see more pluses for a Russian tortoise. Number one, you still avoid the inverts if you're not ready for that, like I said with the bearded dragon. Additionally, there's somewhat of a humidity requirement for leopard geckos. You need to know about humid hides, which I guess Russian tortoises, they do need some humidity from time to time. We recently talked about that, but it's definitely not as important for a Russian tortoise as it is a leopard gecko. Leopard geckos, they can be quite finicky, and that's why a lot of people don't keep them on bioactive setups. Honestly, out of bearded dragons, crested geckos, leopard geckos, a lot of them are really not kept in bioactive all too often. 
Probably the exception is Crested Gecko, but with a Russian tortoise, you can start to get used to keeping them on a non-reptile carpet or non-paper towels, you get what I mean? In summary, with a Russian tortoise, you avoid the finickiness of a Crested Gecko, Bearded Dragon, and Leopard Gecko. Humidity is not as big of a concern. Water is not as big of a concern. You don't have to deal with bugs. Typically, they are very good, enthusiastic eaters. Their diet is very accessible. Just go to any grocery store, really. Enrichment is incredibly easy for them. And they're honestly pretty cheap. Even their setup, it's pretty low cost. Now, this is all not to say that there aren't some areas of concern that I would have. For one, brumation is not really well talked about with Russian tortoises, but it's not essential. I don't really brumate tortellini, but they can brumate like eight months out of the year, which is a long time and something a new keeper might not know too much about and might not find in their research. Additionally, the Achilles heel for a Russian tortoise, which is an incredibly sturdy reptile, is its shell. You really need to make sure you have that proper UVB and things can really go wrong somewhat quickly, but also unnoticeably with their shell if you're not paying attention and providing the correct diet and overall setup. Lastly, compared to a lot of other typical beginner reptiles, Russian tortoises don't have as much information out there, but I can kind of see that as a potentially good thing. I think with the case of bearded dragons, leopard geckos, crested geckos, there's so much information out there that it's hard to sort through and find the good information. There's a lot of misinformation about them, and that's kind of what leads to some of the problems people have with their care, especially when they're getting their care from like a Petco or PetSmart. And I don't really typically see Russian tortoises sold at those type of pet chain stores. So despite Russian tortoises not having as much information out there as those other reptiles do, I think the information out there on Russian tortoises is primarily good information, and you don't need to do as much sorting. Oh, and how could I forget? This is actually probably the biggest concern I would have with a new keeper getting a Russian tortoise. That's space. Tortoises in general, I said this in pretty much every Russian tortoise video, require tons of space no matter their size. So I'd be a little worried that maybe someone would stick them in too small of a setup, perhaps a glass enclosure even, that would definitely be a concern. But I do think that risk can be minimalized by seeing how low cost a proper size enclosure is for a Russian tortoise. And overall, the concerns I have are still minimum compared to other beginner reptiles that are recommended. I would also like to quickly mention that Russian tortoises do live quite a long time long enough that you might have to write them into your will. So definitely consider that. That could possibly be a downside as well, although it's not specific to their care. In summary, I think the concerns I have for Russian tortoises are very little compared to other reptiles out there, especially the core three, leopard gecko, crested gecko, and bearded dragon. I think Russian tortoises are incredibly hardy. They will be fine if you go away for vacation. You can easily get someone to care for a Russian tortoise, which could be a big deal for someone if they have to feed insects to a reptile, so you avoid that whole thing. And honestly, if you're a busy person who wants a reptile, Russian tortoises, you don't need to spend too much time with. There's really not that taming down you need to do, which you might have to do with other reptiles. Now, obviously, I'm not sure why you would get a reptile if you didn't want to spend time with them and learn about them. But in the case that maybe you're going through a period of time where you're getting busy or, you know, that kind of fluctuates, I think Russian tortoises are honestly ideal for that. Furthermore, Russian tortoises introduce newcomers to really the essentials of reptile care. Having UVB, but to a much lower scale. Having a heat bulb, a basking bulb, a temperature gradient, the importance of calcium, and having a well-rounded diet. And also at the same time, the newcomer is being exposed to more advanced elements of pet care, which is why reptiles are more advanced pet. With Russian tortoises, again, you're dealing with that shell growth. You're dealing with having spurts of high humidity. You're dealing with potentially brumation. Those are all more advanced topics that you don't have to deal with in, let's say, your cat or dog. So this is my stance. Russian tortoises, they are the best beginner pet reptile you can start with out there. And the only caveat to that is if you have no passion for them. If you don't have a passion for them, don't get a Russian tortoise because like I said, that's the most important thing in getting a reptile. You wanna have passion for that species or you're not gonna keep them right. That's a lesson I've learned and I think a lesson all of us who keep reptiles have learned. But that's my stance. 
Let me know what you think. I would love to hear your feedback and if there's any arguments you have with the stance. All right, guys. So like I said, let me know what you think in a comment below. Additionally, maybe compare them to snakes for me. I didn't really focus on any beginner snakes as intros into the reptile world because I don't have any snakes. So didn't really feel like I could speak to that, but I would love to hear your opinions on that as well. Otherwise, you guys could get $5 off your first purchase of Reptilinks by using code ProfessorHerp at checkout. Reptilinks is a great nutritious diet for tegus, hognose snakes, blue dump skinks, and more. I feed it to FRAP exclusively, my tegu. So definitely check them out. $5 off your first purchase with code ProfessorHerp at checkout. Alrighty guys, I hope you enjoyed. Make sure to subscribe, like, and leave a comment. I would very much appreciate it, and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye everyone.